Hey guys, it's Bro Uwak, and a couple of days ago, Blizzard surprisingly released the brand new deathmatch map Kanazaka, along with a new developer update that talked about the hidden easter eggs throughout that whole entire map that was supposed to hint at not only lore expansion with our two favorite Shimada brothers, but just the overall Overwatch universe, but also hints at what the new possible Overwatch hero could be. So of course, me being the thirsty Overwatch player that I am, I made a whole entire separate video putting on my tinfoil hats and went in full conspiracy theory mode as to what the new possible hero could be, leading to two conclusions. One of the conclusions that a lot of people will point to is Brit, but I did state before that I don't think this is going to be the brand new hero because it was an early hero concept that I'm pretty sure Blizzard just decided to make into a billboard advertisement for this map to throw us off. And while it might be cool to have another similar diva like hero in the game, I also did state before that it might have been an early concept for Hammond, which I totally forgot forgot to include the picture in that video, but here it actually says support mech and attack mecha where I confuse support with defense for whatever reason, but that's kind of similar like how Hammond is built where he has a defense mode and an attack mode. So I kind of just left that idea in the dirt, but rather ran with the second idea, which is possibly Genji's sister or just some sort of female ninja. But I like the idea of Genji's sister a lot more because on the lore side of things, that would be really, really cool. But in this video, what I want to do was talk about the female ninja hero concept, what it would be like in game to control this possibly brand new female ninja. Not the story, not the connections with Genji and Hanzo, no, just purely game base, which I rarely ever do because I, sometimes I'm not confident in myself to be able to bring a cool and exciting new hero, but this time it's different because I've watched a total of 27 Naruto episodes in my whole entire lifetime to be able to be confident in my abilities to bring us a cool female female ninja. So this is what I came up with. First, let's talk about our primary form of fire. Now, in case you guys don't know, Game Informer actually visited Blizzard where they went through a PowerPoint where one of the slides showcased four silhouettes of possibly brand new heroes, one of them being this female ninja that everyone is just kind of harping up because of the brand new map and the hints and the factions and the foxes ever on the map. But in the article, they said that one of the heroes, which is this female ninja, was controlling this four-sided weapon, which was kind of similar similar to Yuffie or Yuffie from Final Fantasy 7. But when I hear that four-sided weapon, you know what it kind of reminds me of? <laughs> Even though I joked about saying how I watched 27 Naruto episodes, it kind of reminds me of the Demon Wind Shuriken from Naruto whenever they did fight Sabuza. And that's exactly what I want for this female ninja to be wielding on the battlefield, the Demon Wind Shuriken. And how it would work is basically kind of like a boomerang. You would throw it at any kind of enemy and it would come back to you because because, well, you can't just have 20,000 Demon Blade Shurikens in your back pocket, even though Hanzo can have unlimited arrows in his backpack. But, but, we're making this a little bit a more natural of a hero where you throw that giant blade and it comes back to you, but also you can charge it up similar to like how Doomfist's fist charges up and you're able to throw it a lot farther the longer that you charge it. Now, in all honesty, the primary form of fire can be kind of basic and boring. I'm really just going based off of what was described in that article because you can't just have this giant four-sided blade and not use it, but it's really the abilities that makes this hero extremely spicy. The first ability that I want for this female ninja would be totally new to her and something that we have never seen before, and it's the ability to go through walls. This is what I call her shadow sneak ability, but it allows her to go through any single wall or barrier on the map. And what I like about this ability is that I feel like this wouldn't be too broken of an ability, but something very unique to her that fits her hero kit. I mean, a ninja being able to go through a wall isn't too unrealistic. Yes, it is, bro, you whack. Nobody can go through walls. Yeah, well, hamsters aren't able to drive giant wrecking balls either, so chill out with the realism. Kind of think of it like Morris Fade ability, how she's able to go invisible and invisible Invincible, but she's not able to break through walls because that's just not a concept they developed for Mora. Well, this is that same kind of ability, but better because now she is able to go through walls. And I know this ability might seem OP on the surface, but you guys gotta remember, they gotta create abilities that we've never seen before, and anything brand new, yeah, we would think it's overpowered. I mean, Sombra can literally go invisible, and tons of people were freaked out about that ability, and Sombra's bottom tier on the meta list. So I definitely think this is an ability that I think would be used more as a defensive ability. Every single time you see the giant German man going full throttle at you, you can just kind of bloop on out of there past the wall. But then the next, <laughs> the next ability. 
<laughs> okay, you guys are definitely gonna hate me because I'm going full on Naruto Wii mode here, but her next ability is a Shadow Clone ability. <laughs> I'm being totally serious, but I'm only laughing because I know there's gonna be some people like, God, this guy only watches Naruto, doesn't he? I, I mean, I don't even watch Naruto all that much, but I like the idea of the Shadow Clone bot ability, all because, again, we have never seen an ability that grants you to duplicate yourself, maybe with the exception of like Echo's ultimate, but that's not duplicating yourself, that's duplicating one of the enemy's heroes. Here, you can spawn two to like five bots of yourself and they can just get deployed throughout the map. And work exactly the way that the Reaper Specialist in Black Ops 3 works with this Psychosis ability, where he spawns a couple of himself, but since they're bots, they just walk throughout the map kind of aimlessly. It's not like they're super OP, but they can trick a lot of people thinking that, oh, oh, there's the, there's the female ninja hero, oh. Uh oh, that was just the bot. Oh, okay. Sometimes in situations, it would be nice to have a couple of extras of you to kind of psych out the enemy team. Now, what about her ultimate ability? What is something that can really excite people when they hear that a brand new female ninja is coming into the game? I like this idea because it's very complex, but it adds another hero that can interact with the health packs. Now, her ultimate is called Substitution, and what it does is that it sends out a bunch of foxes and substitute the health packs with logs and leaves. Think of this just like Sombra's hacking ability on the health packs where you hack the health packs and it allows your teammates to get the health packs but not the enemies, but 10 times better. Now that might seem OP, but realize this, that this is an ultimate ability and it also allows for another hero to interact with the health packs. Because on paper, it kind of seems OP that Sombra is literally the only hero that can interact with the health packs. This ultimate ability allows to possibly counter her hacks on important health packs, but it can also provide an extra layer of strategy in case your team really relies on health packs on a big team push. But only temporarily. Up until you actually go and try to get the health pack, it turns into a log, and then you have to wait a specific time until it turns into a health pack again. But I also really like the idea of sending out companion foxes to go substitute the health packs with logs and leaves for two reasons. One, this hero is obviously heavily tied with foxes. If you look at Kanazawa, and you see the fox statues, the fox faction, or the fox graffiti, you know that this hero is somehow going to be related to a fox. Plus, that silhouette also had a fox-like figure next to them, so you know a fox companion is somehow going to be related, similar like how Ash and Bob or May and Snowball are together. So it would be really cute to see little foxes scurrying around the map, as long as they're your foxes and not the enemy foxes, because every single time you see them, you know, oh great, I'm not going to be able to get health packs because they're substituted with logs and leaves. But why logs and leaves specifically? Well, what a fox and a kasune represents in Japanese folklore is this creature that is able to transform things into leaves, sticks, and logs. That's why in Animal Crossing, you see so many of the furniture items being represented with this leaf icon. Because oftentimes, a tanuki and a kasune are transforming things to be these leaf-like things. So while this ultimate ability is most definitely adding cool and unique abilities, in the game that we have not really seen before with the exception of Sombra, it's adding another layer of Japanese influence and it's doubling down on the idea that she is a Japanese ninja. I mean, we know for a fact that this hero is somehow going to be influenced from Japanese culture. Whether it's actually going to be a hero that has a fox companion that is a ninja that is possibly related to Genji and Hanzo that somehow is tied into the Shimada clan, that's left up for debate. But one thing I know for certain is that all these abilities are extremely unique and something that I think would be very cool and unique to a hero added in Overwatch in the future. While I know Sojourn is the other hero that is also confirmed for Overwatch 2, it's been so long to the point where I feel like maybe they can get away with adding two or possibly even three brand new heroes upon Overwatch's two release date. While I know that's definitely wishful thinking, I'm just so happy that Overwatch 2 is almost or at least the announcement. And it makes me happy that Jeff Kaplan and the Overwatch team recognizes that, yeah, they have been quiet. But seeing stuff like this with a brand new map and hints at a brand new hero just gets me extremely hopeful for the future of Overwatch and specifically Overwatch 2. I mean, we already have a new hero in the form of Sojourn that is definitely confirmed, but a new female ninja hero? Oh, that... 
That would just get me so, so excited, man. And just think about all the lore and the possible gameplay abilities. It just gets me even more excited in more ways than one. I'm gonna stop right there. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please let me know what you think about this hero concept and throw in any kind of comments down below of what you would like to see from this hero. Primary from a fire, passive abilities maybe, or maybe a different kind of ultimate. But I'll see you guys later. I love you guys and bye.